Couple of months ago, I bought a Raspberry Pi Pico to get some hands-on experience of it and to create some amazing projects using it. But since then, it has just been sitting on my desk collecting dust. Today, after a very long wait, I have finally decided to create a short video tutorial to show you guys how to get started with Raspberry Pi Pico. In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss what is a Raspberry Pi Pico, the technical specifications of the board, how to program Pico using C, C++ and MicroPython using Arduino IDE and Tony's Python IDE and how to install and blink a LED. Difference between Raspberry Pi Pico and Arduino. And to conclude the tutorial, we'll have a look at the pros and cons of the board. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume, colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can order advanced PCBs, aluminum PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need at the greatest extent. Raspberry Pi Pico is a low-cost microcontroller. It can be used to control other electronic modules and sensors, same as any other microcontroller. Pico is not a Linux single-board computer. Rather, it is a microcontroller like Arduino. Since it's a microcontroller, it doesn't come with all the overheads that a computer brings. Hence, it consumes less current. Actually, it's more like Arduino than Raspberry Pi. Pico is not a rival of Raspberry Pi Zero. It actually can work in conjunction with the regular Pis. Pico is a breadboard friendly and has 40 GPIO pins operating at 3.3 volt, 20 on each side. It has a dual core ARM Cortex M0 Plus processor. Pico's brain, the RP2040 microcontroller chip, is designed by Raspberry Pi in the United Kingdom. It can be powered either via the micro USB port or via the VSYS GPIO pin by providing voltage between the range of 1.8 volt to 5.5 volts. Raspberry Pi Pico is absolutely different from all other Raspberry Pi models. Pico is one of the first microcontroller to use the RP2040 Pi Silicon processor. It is a custom system on chip developed by Raspberry Pi team in UK, which features a dual core ARM M0 Plus processor running at 133 MHz with 264 KB of SRAM and 2 MB of flash memory for storing files on it. The specifications are as follows. The one biggest disadvantage of Raspberry Pi Pico is that there is no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth on it. ESP32 and ESP8266 which you can buy for the similar price comes with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Surely you can add wireless connectivity via external components. However, that would require a little bit more knowledge and experience to get it working. Since Pico is not a computer, we need to write our codes on a different machine using an external application and then flash the code on the microcontroller over USB. Here is the top view of the pinouts of the Raspberry Pi Pico. The pin labels are on the bottom side of the board. Pi Foundation officially supports MicroPython and C++. C++. However, high-level programming languages like CircuitPython, a fork of MicroPython created by Adafruit, and drag-and-drop Python editor like Pico Piper, which adds further enhancement and can be used to program the Pico boards. Python and C++ are both great for programming Picos. However, the ability to program a Pico just like an Arduino would help us to integrate the Pico into the Arduino ecosystem. One of the best reasons to do this is because of the availability of libraries to integrate modules, sensors and other complex stuff without having to write the entire code from scratch. To start, let's go to Tools, Board, Board Manager and search for Pico. Select Arduino Embed OS RP2040 Boards and hit the Install button. Connect the micro USB cable to Pico and then press and hold the boot cell button before plugging the USB cable into the computer. Release the boot cell once the drive RP1 RP2 appears on your computer. Now go to tools, port and you'll see the port in there. To load the blink example go to files, 
examples, basics, blink and click on the upload button. This will load the code on the Pico board. After the ID finishes uploading the code, you will see the Pico's onboard LED blinking. You can now use your Pico like an Arduino and program it using the Arduino IDE. You can program your Pico using MicroPython by connecting it to the computer via a USB and then dragging and dropping files to it. Installation of MicroPython on Pico requires a UF2 file to be copied onto it. A UF2 file is a binary data file which contains program that can be transferred from a PC to a microcontroller. To load MicroPython on Pico, download MicroPython UF2 file from the link provided in the description below. Connect the micro USB cable to Pico and then press and hold Hold the boot cell button before plugging the USB cable into the computer. Release boot cell once the drive RP1 RP2 appears on your computer. Drag and drop the UF2 file onto the RP1 RP2 volume. Your Pico will reboot. That's it, you are now running MicroPython on your Pico. To write code and save files to Pico, we are going to use Tony's Python IDE. Tony comes with built-in Python 3.7, so just one simple installer is what you need. To start, download and install Tony free from Tony's website for your version of operating system. The website link is in the description below. If you are running Raspberry Pi OS, then Tony is already installed on it. Connect the Pico to your computer, then in Tony go to Tools, Options and click on the Interpreter tab. From the Interpreter drop down list, select MicroPython Raspberry Pi Pico. The port drop down menu can be left to automatically detect the Pico. Click OK and close. A Python shell called Read Eval Print Loop REPL, will pop up to show that Pico is connected and working. To load the Blink example, enter the following code in the main editor pane to toggle the onboard LED. Click the Run button to execute the code. Tony will ask you whether you want to save the file on this computer or on the MicroPython device. Choose MicroPython device. Enter blink.py as the file name. Make sure you enter .py as the file extension so that Tony recognizes it as a Python file. You should now see the onboard LED switching between on and off until you click the stop button. Before Raspberry Pi Pico, Raspberry Pi has always been known for their single board computers. However, in 2021, Raspberry Pi Foundation stepped a few steps forward and launched the Raspberry Pi Pico, giving a head-to-head -head challenge to Arduino and all other board-based microcontrollers. Arduino was first introduced in 2005 and since then millions of Arduino units have been sold in the market. Compared to that, the response Pico received after its initial launch in 2021 is absolutely mind-blowing. Both units are made for automating applications that do not involve human intervention. Pico can be used alone or in combination with Arduino for automation and AI purposes. Both modules are different in terms of power consumption, value, functionality and price. Pico boards come unsoldered, however Arduino comes pre-soldered or unsoldered. Pico module supports MicroPython and C++, C++ while Arduino codes are written in C++, C++ using Arduino IDE. So, which one to go for? Pico or Arduino? Now let's have a look at the pros and cons of this microcontroller. Raspberry Pi Pico is cheap, very small and easy to use microcontroller. Pico is dual core device coupled with high performance bus matrix. Pico consumes very low power. Pico is breadboard friendly. It can be programmed using C, C++ and MicroPython. Pico can be programmed using Arduino IDE. It has 26 multifunctional 3.3 volt GPIO pins. 23 of them are digital and 3 are analog. Pico comes with 8 pro programmable I.O., P.I.O. and two analog inputs. Pico boots quickly and does not require a safe shutdown. The disadvantages include Pico completely lacks Wi-Fi and Bluetooth without any add-on. It lacks GPIO markings on the top side of the board. The board comes unsoldered so you will have to solder the header pins or surface mount it before using it in your project. GPIO pins are 3.3 volt which could be seen as a disadvantage. However, devices designed for 5 volt can still be used with 3 volt via a voltage divider or a logic level converter. Pico still uses micro USB port. If you have a Windows, Apple, Linux or a Raspberry Pi then you are already well in your way to program this small cute and gorgeous Raspberry Pi Pico in your next project. I bet there must be a lot of project ideas going in your mind. So get your supplies and start coding. So what are you waiting for? 
Thanks again for watching this video. I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks. See you again in my next video. Bye now.